Hello everyone. In this video, we try to learn about synthetic amperature radar, SAR, from Earth Engine Tutorial Community section. There is a tutorial titled Synthetic Amperature Radar SAR Basics. The tutorial contains definitions of SAR related terminologies and also contains some Earth Engine codes helping us to understand more about SAR. The content is super helpful. You can directly go to the page and learn yourself. This video, however, comes as the summary, or I would say as the summary attempt. I have copied the text from the page. I will try to go through them, highlighting the important concepts or topics. So SAR um, is a radar instrument. Radar stands for radio detection and arranging. The use of SAR is for detecting radio waves. Uh, radio waves are the portion of electromagnetic spectrum with longest wavelengths. The measurements are from the intensity of the backscattered signals. So there are two important terms. Uh, the first one is azimuth. It means along the track direction of the sensor antenna. And the second one is range, which means across track or perpendicular to the direction of the sensor antenna. And this term synthetic aperture means the creation of the huge antenna by the use of the motion of the sensor. So there are major differences between SAR and optical sensors. So the first one is that SAR is an active sensor, uh, which means uh, it transmits uh, microwave radiation and receives the uh, reflected portion. So SAR is sight looking, uh, whereas optical sensors are not looking. Um, SAR transmits microwave radiation at precise wavelength, uh, making it coherent. So this allows precise phase and amplitude measurements of the backscattered waves and also the use of the polarizing. So the other advantage um, is that it can work day and night. Uh, it does not depend on, um, uh, on the influence of atmosphere. Uh, so there might be some exceptions just during the um, rainfall conditions. Um, and this Sentinel-1 and our sponsor is both are uh, in GE collections. The SAR backscatter uh, depends on the physical properties of the target, uh, mainly the geometry of the surface or the electromagnetic properties. So the other advantage is that SAR does not uh, need uh, atmospheric correction. Along with that, um, SAR also has some, uh, some drawbacks. For instance, uh, the coherent nature of SAR microwave causes speckle noise. Uh, this is uh, something as salt and paper appearance. The other drawback is uh, due to the incidence angle of SAR, uh, based on the incidence angle, uh, whether it is near range, um, where the where the where there is low incidence angle or far range where there is higher incidence angle so the object might appear different the other drawback is um, due to the terrain or surface structure which can impact the sour back scattering slopes can appear uh, being oriented towards sour and there are shattering effects when slopes are steeper than the local incidence angle. So ESA generates uh, data in two level, uh, in level one. Uh, one is SLC, single loop complex, and the other one is ground range detected GRD. So SLC has both the phase and amplitude information and GRD contains only the intensity. Uh, which is the data available in Octangen. So level one GRD are processed and it ends as 
S1 GID float collection. And this S1 GID float collection is further uh, log scaled as S1 GID data. So in this S1 uh, GID data, the pixel values are in float uh, 32 and it is in UTM projection. So this means um, this data can be used in further uh, analysis. So here, uh, here we have the important diagram demonstrating repeat and coverage frequency of Sentinel-1. So the green uh, lines or green uh, slash um, are where the uh, uh, visit frequencies of Sentinel-1 is around 12 days. And these red lines uh, are the red slashes, mostly in the Europe, and the, re uh, the visit frequency is about six days. So also in polls, um, in the pol polar region, the coverage is higher about uh, one to three days. Uh, so also there are different uh, reference data sites uh, where repetitions are about every uh, six days. So there is also another diagram uh, demonstrating the Morse and polarization. So we can see the green area, uh, this green area here, it, it is mostly of IW mode, you know, which is the, the most common in land, uh, where polarizations are uh, VV or uh, VVV at. Uh, and in the pools, uh, we have HS or HS and SV polarizing. So there are three other modes, um, IW mode, uh, single polarizing, E double mode dual polarization and E double mode uh, single polarization. So these uh, polarizations uh, mainly occur in poles. And we also have uh, calibration sites uh, where different modes or polarizations are possible. So now we move to the codes. Um, so we have the codes uh, within that tutorial to sort the revisit period in different areas of the world. So we are not going to the codes uh, line by line. We're just running here. And so we are uh, counting um, the revisit uh, best uh, in the area. The first, here, uh, the first one here is for the European region. So uh, this is just to demonstrate that the uh, revisit is maximum in uh, Europe. So let us uh, comment, comment this line and uncomment the next line uh, that is in the near the equator. So for the equatorial region, uh, the value decreases slightly. So we get the maximum count is nine, which is less than uh, European region. So for the case of India, let us run this again. So it is somewhere between 10 to 12. And finally, um, as I am from Nepal, I also want to see uh, what's the value for my country. So let us run this again. So um, according to the tutorial, uh, there has been some uh, design uh, in the way that the Himalayas uh, gets more uh, revisits. So it is a little, uh, more um, so this is just to show that uh, how we can see the repeats around the world. So um, continuing our understanding about Sentinel One, uh, it is polar orbiting. Um, uh, it means that it crosses North Pole and descends to South Pole, um, crosses it again and ascends back to North Pole. So uh, the, the image properties ascending and descending uh, comes from that. So let me read this line in bold. Uh, the total time uh, needed to go from north to south pole and 
back is about eight, 98 minutes, 175 orbits in 12 days. In that time, the Earth is turning about uh, 23 degrees to the east, which is why descending orbits are slightly rotated towards the southwest and ascending orbits towards the northwest. So the other image properties are orbit number start and relative orbit number start. Uh, so these properties provide the sequence number of the orbit in the uh, revisit cycle. So Sentinel-1 also has uh, different modes and polarizations, as we saw in the diagram before. Uh, I double mode is the most common mode. Um, and I double mode SWAT is around uh, 250 kilometer in size. And E double mode has a uh, 400 kilometer uh, SWAT. So uh, Sentinel-1, is a uh, right looking uh, or a side looking antenna, uh, which is sending microwave uh, beams at 90 degree uh, related to the sensor's light path. And near range have uh, the longer, um, uh, near range have the lower incidence angles uh, compared to far range. And descending orbits have uh, near to far range uh, from roughly east to west. And for ascending orbits, it is roughly west to east. So this is how the uh, foots are oriented for ascending and descending paths. Um, so level zero samples are caught into azimuth uh, time slices of 25 seconds each, and which is processed as GRD. Uh, 25 seconds of uh, azimuth time corresponds to approximately 185 kilometer on the ground. We are not going to the courts. Uh, we only run this court here. So after running this court, uh, we get different layers here. So here we have our area of interest. The small red icon here is our area of interest. So we can see two descending orbits, orbit number 37 and our other, another orbit 110 is being overlapping. And if we display individual footprints like this, so this is to show that um, descending scenes, um, descending scenes here are rotated to Southwest and ascending scenes are uh, towards the northeast. So this is just the orientation. So this one here is descending and descending are somewhere to south west and ascending are somewhere towards the northeast. And for our orbit number 88, the scene boundary has caught right through the area of interest. In this case, a full image is possible through compositing two adjacent scenes. We can also see incidence angles layer. So these layers are generated uh, from the angle band um, and incidence angles varies between 30 and 30 to 39 degrees. So this can be confirmed by inspector tab here. So this white region here, I click on the white region. So for the white region here, So let us see here. 
is somewhat 45.37. And if we click on the black region here, it's about 30. So this white region has the higher angle and this black region has the uh, less angle value. Similarly, we can see the VV and uh, VH values for our different areas. So, So we can click in any area we like and see the different VV and VS values. So the um, other thing to note is that lowest incidence angle is in near range and highest uh, incidence angle is in far range. So there are uh, many other influences that should be considered, such as uh, speckle environmental factors for further analysis. Uh, so this was everything about synthetic aperture radar, SAR basics. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I basically tried to summarize uh, what's in the, uh, in, in the tutorial there. So if you have any comments uh, in any part of this video, or uh, anything you would like to suggest me, please let me know in the comments. Uh, so this much in this video, uh, thank you for watching.